Yeah, so uh, welcome to Farmer Founders Mansion. Yeah, typically most people kind of stir in the parlor. This okay. was um, essentially the area where um, people would have guests. This was kind of like the sort of the living room area. Okay. Um, you know, a lot of this mansion is kind of built around um, Victorian architectural fashion. So the idea with the parlor was that it was very big, but then you split it into halves and like usually like a curtain would hang down the center of it. So like right there. Yep. Like from the lattice right up there. Okay. So like splitting into two halves of the, um, the south parlor was for like having guests, um, visitors and then the, uh -huh. That was the, over here was more of the living room space for like the family. So oh. the pers personal family would stay over in that area. Okay. So, um, so yeah, this was uh, first built in 1884 and it wasn't originally built to be a governor's mansion. Yes. Um, so it was originally built by a wealthy business owner in the area named Asa Fisher. So that's why it's very much built as sort of built with built in mind for kind of being sort of a portrayal of being wealthy versus, you know, sort of the utility of a home made for the governor. Okay. Um, so uh, one notable feature in the room is going to be the wallpaper. Yes. We have peeled back certain wallpapers to kind of show what uh, wallpapers would have looked like back then. Uh, granted, a lot of these wallpapers have oxidized with time, so like, they're not as vibrant as they once were. Yes. It's Victorian wallpaper, especially in houses, was very bright, pet, uh, pastel, even gaudy. Like uh, some of these probably would have had like silver or gold trim oh, in, yeah. or embossing on them. Mm -hmm. um, and in fact, the current wallpaper mm -hmm. is not actually really accurate to the time. Okay, okay. Because <laughs> like wallpapers um, back then, especially in houses, were meant to kind of add light to the room so like light would come in from the windows and it would bounce off yes a dark wallpaper like this is going to absorb light and make the room darker okay. so during victorian times like a dark wallpaper like this would be more akin to being used in like a bar oh, okay <laughs> so yeah this is is not accurate this was hung up in the 80s based on an, an inaccurate oral history okay okay yeah so. So what did they use for heating, like in winter? I know it gets very cold here in North Dakota. Um, traditionally, traditionally yeah. heating, heating was done via fireplaces and then uh, coal boilers. So you'll see radiators in almost every room. And they basically had a boiler down the basement. Yeah, right there. You have the radiators over there. And yeah, they had a boiler down the basement that you had to constantly put coal in to keep the place warm. Okay. And this is the construction behind this room? Yep. So over here, this is the original uh, plywood kind of structure used for the house. So you'll see a lot of really elaborate woodwork from wood that was being imported over from the east. So a lot of cherry, walnut, maple. Uh -huh. But the actual structure of the house itself was just made from cottonwood you could find around here. Okay. And if this place were ever to um, catch on fire, which yeah. was very common back then, mm -hmm. it would probably go up very quickly because so many of the houses around here were built with cottonwood back then and cottonwood burns very quickly. In fact, um, historic Bismarck back, I think in 1896, half of downtown Bismarck burnt down because of this, just the way houses were built back okay. then. And this, what's this? So we have two examples of windows that were used back then. Originally, um, it would have been the smaller window. So the smaller window is a reconstruction of the original window. This, um, the larger window was put up during the Burke administration to add more light to the room. And this is original. This is not reconstruction. This is the w actual window he put in back then. Okay. Wow. Beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> and this furniture right here was here when they... Yeah, this... Most of the stuff that we have roped off would have been original furniture thus far. When the governor was here? Yep. Wow. Amazing. Okay. Okay. 
So in here would be the dining room. Okay. Um, one thing you might make note of is the um, maple flooring. This is a, the original flooring. Okay. Um, it was made with maple and they use very kind of very small boards as sort of another symbol of wealth. <laughs> yeah. um, the wallpaper here is definitely more an accurate reconstruction of the time. You can even see the example it was based off of with some of the wallpaper samples we have. Okay. Um, at one point, when one of the, with each governor, they would kind of renovate certain things, have different wallpapers put up. Um, one of the governors, Governor Langer, he when he had the wallpaper put up in this room, Apparently the guys who were putting up the wallpaper were drunk mm -hmm. <laughs> and they accidentally put hung all the wallpaper upside down. So like Langer had to call the boss, the, the guy's <laughs> boss to come in here and fix the wallpaper. <laughs> wow. Yeah, so more often than not, this was used for just the family dining. Although a few governors did have like formal events put on in here. Uh -huh. Langer was probably the most notorious for this because he was always very busy and he would have like a like an official dinner where like all the senators would want to meet with him and ask him stuff, ask him favors and all that. So apparently there was a notorious event where all the senators were just lined up outside of the mansion waiting for their chance to speak with him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow, look at that. Yep, that, um, not the original sink. This was put up in the 30s. The okay. original sink would have been over here where that little spot is. Mm -hmm. The kitchen was typically the um, coldest um, room in the house. Okay. <laughs> Mostly just because uh, it was it was facing westward and like we, so like much, much of the brunt of the wind came to this room and so much so that a lot of the governor's wives talked about how they would have to wear sh overshoes on their feet when they're cooking in here because it would get so cold. <laughs> <laughs> wow. What what material is porcelain? Uh, I'm not sure. positive on the material they used for these types of sinks back then. Wow. Okay. Yeah, um, over here we would have the ice box. Um, this is kind of unusual for an ice box because most ice boxes aren't built in, mm -hmm. but this was like a, a, a later type of ice box kind of um, manufactured by an early refrigerator company. So it was built in into the wall and eventually it was electrified. Oh, okay. So it had like a kind of a pressure seal system put on it. So it basically became an early refrigerator at that point. Okay, cool. Okay. And down here, yes, it was a half bath, as they would call it. Yeah, that was an addition later on. That was originally this house only had one bathroom. Can I take a look inside? Go ahead. Okay. Yeah. And I see uh, the radiators, like you said. Yep. There's one here. There's one there. Uh, did the governor use this or this was for guests? Well, this was honestly probably anyone would use it. This was actually an addition. This was added in the 30s because the house originally only had one bathroom and it was upstairs. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. um, through here, mm -hmm. and we'll, you'll see more of this upstairs, but this was a second stairwell that went up to the servants' quarters. Okay. Um, this was something that got probably gotten more use during yeah. Asa Fisher's time. Yes. Um, we've heard stories that during the governor's uh, time, this got most of its use from certain governors like Langer trying to just sneak away from <laughs> people trying to visit him at the front door. Yeah, yeah, he's <laughs> so he just sneak <laughs>
Wow, the woodwork. That's yeah. amazing. We often have people ask questions about the handrails because they're so small and... And low. <laughs> yeah, they're low. And the question always comes up, were people just shorter back then? And it was like, no, it was just, <laughs> that was just the style like this small uh, tiny short <laughs> yeah they, they're actually quite low yeah that's what like uh two and a half feet yep yeah it's quite low that's right oh today that would have passed a safety test yeah, yeah. osha standards were not a thing but like, <laughs> there's a lot of features on this house we're definitely not past <laughs> yeah but um so yeah we we're now at like some of the guest bedrooms. This is more often than not used as a guest bedroom. Okay. Uh, at, at one point, yes, there would have been fireplaces in each of the rooms. So okay, and there would be some right there. Yeah, there would have been a fireplace over here. Okay. In fact, in the photo on the side, you can see how the room would originally looked. Um, one feature you'll see on a lot of, on a lot of the radiators up here yes, sir. is these guys. Okay. Um, because boiler heat, boilers are so, they dry the air so bad. Mm -hmm. The idea was you would put water in this uh -huh. and it would add moisture back into the air. Oh. So it's basically a humidifier. A humidifier. <laughs> Ingenious. Beautiful. Yeah, so this was the master bedroom. Wow. More often than not, this is where the governor and his wife would have stayed. Wow. Um, some early features that were pretty extravagant back in those days. Okay. A uh, uh, walk in closet. Yes. With built in shoe rack and a built in cupboard in the closet itself. It's not terribly big, but it's just beautifully designed. Mm. Wow. Now, one thing that didn't get added to this place until the 30s. Yes. You notice how like in there, the light is, there's no light fixture. It's just a light bulb hanging from uh, a string. Yes. Uh, up until the 30s, uh, most of the lights in most of the rooms yes. were similar to that. There was no light fixtures. It was just light bulbs from strings. So, um, certain modernizations were not added until much later on. Okay. Because a lot of it really came down to the fact that once the state bought this place, they weren't doing a whole lot of renovating. Any renovations that was being done once the state bought it yes. was out of the governor's own pocket. Oh, I see. So you'll notice a pattern of which governors were doing the most renovating. And the two that did the most was John Burke and yeah. Langer. And those two, before becoming politicians were lawyers so it's oh. like the wealthier of the, <laughs> the ones putting most of the money into renovating this place i can tell it's the masters see how big that is yeah and it also has that uh, humidifier yeah okay so what what would be this be okay so these were um belongings for one of the governors uh governor lewis Hanna. okay um he alongside a lot of the old governors Mm -hmm. We're members of the Shriners, uh, a Freemason group. So that's why it has all like the the Freemason oh. sigils on it. Is it this in like Illuminati? Oh, uh, not not as much. They they were they were a fraternal organization back in the day. They, a lot of people in the government were kind of yeah. So it does, you definitely hear conspiracy theories, but oh, then there's a chair with this insignia. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's this? So this was essentially like a nursery room or a, a kids a kids bedroom. Sometimes also used as a study. Um, you can even see some of the more uh, childlike wallpapers. Okay, okay, okay. I see that. Yeah. 
So if the governor had like a child, a baby, the baby yes. would be right next to the parents. Yeah, so so like governors would have had kids, so this would have been like the nursery room the nursery for, them. for the babies, okay. Yeah. And have a little bed. Yeah, and one of the other features that would have not passed today is the balcony with the very short rails. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> extremely, extremely <laughs> short. Um, just a question in passing. Those uh, trees out there, they look humongous. How old do you think they might be? The, the trees? Yeah. Like, um, I think they're some like the biggest I've seen around here. Oh yeah, the, the elm trees date back to the early days of the governor, so they're definitely pretty old, close to 100 years at this point. Okay. We have pictures of um, some of the trees they were planting back then. At one point, they were trying to grow like box elder maples, mm -hmm. but then at one point, I think by the 1910s, 1920s, they removed all the box elders and instead planted a bunch of elm trees, so. Okay. And then now uh, the curtains then typically would be lace material like this. Yeah. Huh. Wow. Um, I always like that photo because it's so out of place with all the other governor photos. He, the most short-lived governor, he was only a governor like for five weeks. <laughs> what happened to him? Okay, so um, Langer was kind of a... Kind of a piece of work. <laughs> like okay. He, you had a lot of grand ideas for like trying to help farmers during like the Great Depression and all that, but he had a had a bad habit of making political enemies. So oh. like he eventually did some things that got him thrown out of office. <laughs> okay. During his time out of office, he tried having his wife run instead of him, <laughs> and she was running against this guy. <laughs> um, um, near the end of near the end of the run of where he was, she was running against him. Near the end of the election, yes. Um, Langer had dug up dirt that he had voted four years prior in a Minnesota election. Thus, oh. he was not would not be considered a resident of North Dakota for the required oh. five years. But the Supreme Court, um, the, the powers that be, basically withheld this information until after he was elected just to make sure that Langer's wife didn't win by default. <laughs> so yeah, he was elected and then was immediately removed from office once they learned. <laughs> nice little piece of history. Yeah. Um, I have a question. Yeah. I don't know if you might have an answer for it. I've noticed that thing. Is it like a telephone thing uh, in some of the rooms, this little thing that there? Um, I'm actually not sure. I would have to ask my boss on that. I'm not. Okay, I've seen it in a couple of rooms downstairs. I wouldn't be surprised if that was like a telephone. A telephone. Wow. Here we have another guest bedroom. Um, in this room, the chip, the fireplace would have been over here. A lot of times you can tell where fireplaces would have been because those little circles you put on the walls, those usually are an ornament you hang above a fireplace. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. This one is a bit bigger. Yeah. Um, we have a lot of uh, some examples of some of the old lamps okay. they would have had in here. And kind of what I was talking about earlier with like the, having no light fixtures, those are examples of the early light bulbs they would have had instead of fixtures. Okay, okay. Yeah. Also just get to see just how how crazy the old wiring of the house would have looked. <laughs> yeah, and then the fixtures they look like they're ceramic. Yep. Wow. And is this all that uh, wallpaper? Um, I'm not sure how old this wallpaper is. Okay, it looks like an older kind of design. Mm -hmm. It's from the 70s, 60s. Wow. Oh, this is, yeah. this is that kitchen. 
Yeah, so over here was the servants' quarters. So. Oh, thank you. Take it. Yeah. This is there. Then you come to the yeah, side. So during the Ace of Fisher time, this probably would have been the most used, as he was, kind of would have had his own personal butler staff and whatnot. Oh, is that on the floor, actually? These are linoleum rugs. Huh. And that was the type of rug that was common back then, especially if you didn't want to spend money on a, a proper cloth rug. You, you still get the decorative design, but like the linoleum is much cheaper than getting like a proper rug made of cloth material. Okay. Wow. <laughs> Oh, that's a bathroom. Yeah, so that was the original bathroom. This is what it looks like. Yeah, this was what the original bathroom looked like. And they specifically put it in the servants' quarters because back then, indoor plumbing was very new and it was considered unseemly. So you basically kept the bathroom out of sight, out of mind. Oh, everybody was still using the outhouse. Yep. Hey, look at that mirror, it's beautiful. I like the tall ceilings though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so this is another service quarters. Oh, this is the linoleum also, but... Yeah, see so more linoleum rugs. It's breaking up a little bit. Oh, that's a beautiful chair. Mm -hmm. Wow. So this is another maid's room? Yep. Okay. Yeah, during the governor's time, this was often... These two rooms were often used as like sewing rooms and that sort of thing. Okay. Oh, there's a laundry chute yep, too. that was the laundry chute. Wow. And then... And then we have the attic. So originally, the attic would have just been one big room. This wall was over here originally. So okay. Back when the house was first built, this was used for like ballroom. Okay. Ballroom gatherings. But when the governors lived in here, mm -hmm. they had the wall put up and they converted this space into like a children's playroom. Okay. Wow, it's a huge attic. Yeah. Yeah, so more often than not, the kids would be setting up here to play, or sometimes the kids would use this as the bedroom. It is huge. Mm -hmm. And then it has that boiler, heat, uh, the radiator. Yeah. Let's take a look outside. Over here we have another balcony that would not pass <laughs> today's standards. Oh, directly to the flag. Wow, so from when you are inside the house, you could actually just, you know, if people are outside, you could always just look a little bit and see. Right? No. <laughs> one thing, one thing the house did have to have, have to have, I don't know when it was added, but if you look there, mm -hmm. that is the anchor for the fire escape rope. Oh, so I didn't have a fire escape, but it was just a single rope that you tied to that. And then people would jump out from here. Yeah. It got most of its use from uh, John Davis Jr., the son of Governor J John Davis, because he would—he was a teenager at the time, and he would basically use the fire escape to sneak out at night. <laughs> <laughs> oh, kids! Wow, this is amazing. What's your name again? My name is Chris. Chris. I really, I really appreciate it. I mean, you're so knowledgeable about the place. It's amazing.
me see. Yep. Uh, did I hear that there's, there's a ghost somewhere here? What's that? Ghost. We, we sometimes hear stories. I haven't experienced anything, but there is one governor who passed away in the mansion. Huh. Yeah. So some, some people say he's a ghost on some place. But um, he, his story is actually kind of sad. He, he died pretty young. He died of tuberculosis. Oh, no. The very night... Um, the very night the Bismarck fire happened, like there's stories oh. of him being on the porch just watching downtown Bismarck burn, and then the very same night he died in his sleep from from TB. Ah, oh, yeah, yeah. But um, if you go up through these doors, there's a yellow building. Yes. To the left, that's the carriage house, and that was essentially what was used for horse carriages and eventually the garage for um the draw the car the car that would have drove in the governor around. Okay. Um, if you go up there, there's a museum kind of on the history of like um, horse carriages all the way to modern automobiles and kind of its history here in Bismarck. So, okay. And that's mostly self-guided, but feel free to, if you want to take a look out there. I will for sure. Thank you so much, Chris. Yep. <laughs> you have a good Thanks. Day. You too, sir. You've been such a wonderful guide. Uh, okay. Got it up.